way out. Let my God leave us. Let's not He will be
Praise the Lord. We thank God for yet another opportunity to get equipped for exploits in the new year. This seminar that commences this morning is our annual seminar. And for several years we've uh, not uh, find any reason to change the speaker. The speaker has always been dear brother, Bill Iconi. And many people have testified that because of this seminar that we usually hold every January, yeah, life each year uh, receives a strong mark. Please, can you come down a little bit? Praise the Lord. And we are here again to receive a strong impact from heaven that will change our destiny. Once again, we want to welcome those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time. We have a, a former Honorable Minister of Sports. He's on sports here with a wife. And we are glad to have you in our midst. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. This morning... As we start the seminar, I want you to remember that the theme of the seminar is fruit that remains. This theme is taken from John chapter 16, verse 15. And our desire in this seminar is that by the time we come to the end of this seminar, you would have been fully equipped by the Holy Spirit to live a genuine, successful life and have lasting results in every area of your life this year. Spiritually and in every, every other area of your life. So much has happened this, month, uh, this year that to me I am feeling that it's already, we are already six months into the new year. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. So much has taken place this January that I'm already feeling as if I've uh, spent six months already. The new year. But we thank God for the opportunity to receive again. Uh, the person who will be ministering to us again is uh, Brother Bila Akoni. He came again with a precious wife. We're glad to have you all welcome in Jesus' name. So as we worship now... You get ready to receive from God. The first to worship the Lord. Ah, 
Take this time to worship the Lord again. I'd like you to tell him that he should draw you nearer to himself. Lord, we ask you to help us to stop. Father, we ask you to reveal yourself to us. Lord, you come down again in the beauty of your holiness. In our situation, do something definite in our lives today. Hallelujah! Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the where thou hast died. Draw me near, draw me near, 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 blessed Lord, blessed Lord, to the end, I shall stay We thank you because of your very presence amongst us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your desire for our lives individually and as a congregation. Thank you for this year again. We are gathered around you and at your feet. We are looking unto you that you will speak to our lives. You will impact our lives. You will do something definite with our lives. And this 1998 will be a year of fruitfulness, a year of abiding fruitfulness, a year of definite accomplishment in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you go ahead of us into this year to push down all our enemies, to cause all our Goliaths to lie flat, Lord, we will be a fruit for you. You will be satisfied with our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Every obstacle on our ways, every entrance to our fruitfulness, Holy Spirit, we ask you to uproot them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are praying, give us a vision of fruitfulness, a vision of bearing, abiding fruit for you, and abounding fruit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we are prayed. Praise the Lord. Please be seated and God bless you. I want to give God praise for yet another opportunity He has granted us to come together again and to look into God's mind, to look at what is God's desire for our lives in the course of this year. I perceive 
that God is advancing us uh, individually and as a church onto a level where we are going to begin to accomplish the divine expectations of God for our lives. And I perceive also that the Holy Spirit will want to challenge our lives individually onto some things God is waiting to see over the years in our lives and by our hands. Several things that God had designed and ordained that will come to pass on the earth through you. Uh, it's about the time for that thing to begin to take place now. And I just want to pray with you that you get yourself together and get ready for action. Get ready to begin to do things that will account when eternity suddenly comes upon us. My prayer as we begin this seminar today and this morning that the Spirit Himself will teach us. He will speak explicitly to our hearts and cause His grace to abound in your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Our theme has been taken, as our pastor said, from the book of John chapter 15. And it was proper for me this morning just to introduce that generally. There's no time for deep teaching this morning. When we come in the night, we'll begin to dig into scriptures on the issues of bearing fruits and fruits that remain. And uh, But this morning, I would just do a general introduction uh, about bearing fruits and bearing fruits that meet the demands of God. So this morning, I'll first of all be dealing with satisfying the heart of God with our lives, with our fruits. Satisfying the divine expectations over our lives as we bear fruits. Fruits that satisfies the divine expectation. That's what we'll be looking at very quickly now. Bearing fruits that satisfy divine expectations. Now, John chapter 15. I will not be reading the whole chapter because, again, there's no time, but we are going to study that chapter very intently in the course of this seminar. But for today, we are going to read verse 1, verse 2, and then we will read verse 15 and verse 16. John chapter 15, verse 1 and verse 2, verse 15 and 16. Then we can go on. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth no fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that he may bring forth more fruit. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Just before we stop reading, turn your Bibles also to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. And we'll read verse 7, verse 8, and verse 9. Hebrews chapter 6. 7, 8, and 9. 
For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh often upon it and bringeth forth earth meat for them by whom it is dressed receives blessing from God. For that which beareth tongues and breeds is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be born. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. May God bless his word in the name of Jesus. Now, in these two scriptures that we have uh, read, there are three quick things that we need to quickly point out. And as we point that out, will be ready to draw the application and the implication for this message this morning. First and foremost, we find the Lord Jesus Christ giving a personal introduction of himself, giving a personal <coughs> introduction of himself and of his role, of his role, in the lives of any man that will bear fruit. And he was not just introducing himself, he was also introducing his father, introducing the father's role in the life of any man that will bear fruit, and fruit that shall remain. And it is very, very, very crucial for me to tell you that we cannot talk about bearing fruit, fruits that meet divine expectations, except we begin properly to recognize, to understand, and to perceive the role of the Lord Jesus Christ and his Father in our lives if we are ever going to bear any fruit. It will be arbitrary, and actually it will be very vague, to start urging you to try to bear fruit, if we are not going to follow the matter according to the course which the Lord Jesus Christ has earmarked for it. So, the first thing we are going to do today, try to introduce again the Lord Jesus the way he has introduced himself in this passage. Now, it is when a man is properly connected unto the Lord Jesus in this way that he can bear fruit that will satisfy divine expectations. Now, look at it. Verse 1. I am the true vine. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Other version says, my father is the vine dresser. Is there a version like that? Which version is that one? Living Bible, New King James. Thank you very much. My father is the vine dresser. We are going to take note of those two important words. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser, is the husband man. Every branch in me that taketh no fruit, he taketh away. So I want us to deal with verse 1 before we press on. Now, when the Lord Jesus Christ stood up to introduce himself, I am the true vine. Two quick things come to my mind. I wish he had just said, I am the vine. He do not have raised this question that is coming to my mind. The question is that when he said the true vine, that presupposes there is something else. The wide vine. The wide vine. But it will be difficult for me to arbitrarily 
again begin to conjure in my mind what is the, the wild vine. So we will need again to check the Bible and find out what is the wild vine. Where does it come from? What is the origin of it? Do we have them around? That is the first approach in dealing with fruits that we meet divine expectation. Now, when you go to the book of Romans, and I want you to run with me to the book of Romans, let's check Romans chapter 11. The Bible talks about something that looks similar. Romans 11. Are you there already? All right. Let's look very quickly. It's a very long passage, and yet I do not have the time for us to read it all through. But it will be good if we can read from verse 16. Let's quickly try to read from verse 16, and then we'll go on. I will be jumping when I think it's necessary to jump in order to save time. But at home, you can read the whole thing as God will grant you grace. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and there will be a wide holy tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the roots and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the roots, but the roots they. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God fear not the natural branches, take it, lest he also spare not thee. Behold therefore the goodness and the severity of God, on them which fear severity, but towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall this, which be the natural branches, be grabbed into their own holy tree. I think we can stop there. All I want us to learn is already very clearly stated. Praise the Lord. Now, we notice from the scripture here, we are only using this to explain John chapter 15 verse 1. Are you with me? We are not dealing with this passage on its own. So I don't want you to start asking me questions about uh, the the natural uh, descent of Israel and all of that. I'm not dealing with that situation this morning. I'm only dealing with a matter that the Holy Spirit has referred to here in order to give us an understanding of what Jesus said when he, when he said, I am the true vine. Now, when you see the scripture here, it gives you an understanding that every man that is born of a woman, every man who is a Gentile by nature, the Bible tags our life 
very simply. He said we were of what? The wide holy tree. And I think that is all right. That information should be sufficient. That every man in its natural state, in its natural life, as soon as a man is born of a woman, no matter how highly educated he is, no matter his experiences in life, no matter the morality of the society where he has grown up, and no matter his profession, he is of the white olive plant. What makes a vine wide is the root that is carrying it. That's why I began to talk about if the root be holy, then the fruit will be all right. Do you understand that? He said, if the root were to be correct, then the whole thing all the fruits that will come out of it, they will be correct. And so when something is wild, it is not wild at the level of the leaves. It is not the leaf that makes a tree wild. Is that all right? It is not even the branches that make a particular vine to become wild. It is the roots. It is the particular seed that brought it forth. Do you follow me to that stage? Alright. So we notice that every man born of a woman we have a natural descent from the wide olive tree. And that is why the fruit that comes in the life of any man, any natural man, that has not been grafted or grafted onto the correct true vine, is going to be natural and is going to be wild. It's going to be untamable. It's going to be uncontrollable. I need to inform you that, and sincerely speaking, all of us, that were born of a woman, we started out our lives where? On the wide olive plant. I will need to spend a little time looking at that matter. All of us, born naturally, born of the flesh, born bred by ourselves and in our own life and in our own natural state we were born of that wide olive plant and as a result the fruit that we naturally bear the fruit that come out of our life the fruit that comes out of our character the fruit that come out of our operations they are wild naturally. They are expected to be so because the root was wrong. The book of Job says, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? And who can bring what is man that is born of a woman that he should be clean? A man that drinks iniquity like water. Hallelujah. For every man that has not encountered what I call a grafting. And we'll be dealing with that very quickly because 
we can't be talking of fruit in our natural life. If you are left on your own, no matter how we train you, no matter how we trim a natural plant, we cannot put a different fruit upon you. Is it possible? We just plant a wide orange and fertilize it very well. Trim it, dress it, water it, do everything that is supposed to be done for that particular plant. What will it produce for you? It's white orange. It's white orange. It will be very big, but it will be white. Are you understanding? Why is see why? It's because the root is what? It's why. So it was very, very significant. When the Lord Jesus began to introduce and said, I am what? The true vine. If any man is ever going to become a branch that bears the kind of fruit that God is looking for, the first thing that must happen to his life is what I call a grafting process. A grafting process. A cutting away from the native branch. A cutting away from where we were growing. From the kind of life that was growing inside of us. The kind of nature that was developing inside of our lives. If grafting does not take place, we will bear fruit. But the fruit that we will bear is after our own kind. And what is it? It's going to be what? It's not going to be acceptable. It's not going to meet the expectation of God. It's not going to satisfy the heart of God. It's not going to be acceptable in heaven. The natural fruit. A grafting must take place. And the grafting, which we are going to see very quickly, for grafting to take place, and for a man that was growing naturally on a white plant to be cut out, cut out, and grafted upon the true vine, the Lord Jesus, in order for him to become a branch on the Lord Jesus, is the first issue that we must deal with if we are ever thinking of bearing fruit that meet divine expectation. Do you understand me to that point? All right. All right. The reason is because the Bible says that which is born of the flesh is flesh. It will always produce fruit for who? For the flesh. He said, marvel not that I say unto you, you must what? Be born again. Listen, what's the meaning of that? Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. This man, I tell you, was more religious than all of us here. Nicodemus was a Bible scholar. Nicodemus understood the scriptures from Genesis all through to Malachi. They were on his fingertips. Nicodemus was a devout man. Nicodemus, he fasted every Wednesday, every Friday for all his years. Nicodemus, he studied the Bible, not only for himself, but to teach. And actually, Nicodemus left all that he was doing to become a teacher in Israel. Nicodemus, he prayed not less than three hours a day. Every day of his life, he spent three solid hours 
talking to God. Nicodemus, if you were here this morning when we were talking about giving unto the lepers and unto the TV patient, oh, Nicodemus will have been one of the champions of that kind of cause. He believes in hands. He believes in supporting the poor. He does good things. Nicodemus did not only do that, he recognizes good gifts. He recognizes men of God. So when Jesus Christ came, whereas others were confused, they said Jesus was Daisy Bob and all of that, Nicodemus quietly came to Jesus and said, We know that you are a man that has come from God. For no man does this kind of miracles that you are doing, except the Lord is with him. And I expected that Jesus Christ will have looked at all the credentials of this man and shake him and uh, congratulated him and embraced him and uh, bring him among his folk and say, well, I thank God for you. Not many people understood me like you have understood. And I'm so happy that you know that I'm a man from God. But instead, the Lord Jesus Christ confronted this man, this honorable man. He said, let me not deceive you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What is the meaning of that? Jesus was dealing with the issue. Say no matter how a man fasts, as far as I'm concerned, you know, fasting does not change the nature of a plant. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The fertilization does not put in a plant. What is not there? What does fertilizer do? You only come to enlarge what was there. Do you understand what I'm talking about now? You see, fertilization, swimming, uh, taking care, vine dressing does not do anything to the nature of the vine. It only helps whatsoever is in the vine to find a correct expression. Is that not so? So Jesus said, Mr. Nicodemus, you are reading the Bible and I praise God for that. You are even preaching. That is good. You even know miracles. That's correct. You even understand so many things. You even fast. You pray. But that is not basic. The basic thing that is wrong in your life is, is your nature. You are of the wise only one. And you need to be grafted. When you see a man that is fornicating, let me tell you, it is nothing. That is the fruit of the wise only that is bearing him up. And look, brother, I found it very, very incorrect to go and tell a mango tree, a wild mango tree, that is naturally producing wild mango fruit, and you are quarreling with it, and say, but why are you doing this now? Why are you bearing this kind of fruit now? If the mango had mouth, it would have told me, and say, but you are confused yourself. What else do you expect me to produce? I'm supposed to produce after my own kind. You blame me for nothing. You are talking on But Jesus in John chapter 8, he said, you are only doing what your father used to do. You remember that? He said your father was a liar. That's why you tell that. You are not understanding scripture. When you meet a liar, you are not saying, don't tell lies, don't tell lies. No, no, what else? Do you want 
a descendant of a liar to do? Is he not to tell lies? And if he is not telling lies, he must be abnormal. Is that not so? For a natural man not to commit sin, he must be abnormal. Someone that has not been engrafted from the wise only plant to bear a fruit that is different from the natural fruit of the natural man, he must be an abnormal man. And when we see him, we need to check him out very well. I must ask you, is it more natural for you to sin? Is it more natural for you to tell a lie? Is it more natural for you to run after a woman? Is it more natural for you to cheat in business? Is it more natural for you to be arrogant? Is it more natural for you to be angry? It is only an indication of the nature of plant which you are. You are not understanding what I'm saying, no? It, it, listen. When you see a mango tree and produce bitter mango, do you think that the mango fruit is the thing that made the tree to be mango? Eh? Which one? It is the root. It is the nature of the tree that has manifested in what? In the fruit. And the issue to deal with is not how to pluck away all the mango fruit. That will not solve the problem, will it? Because tomorrow, if the tree is ever going to produce again, what will it produce again? Abba. It's the same thing. Sometimes we can punish a tree. We say, look, you this tree, you are producing tongues. We don't like tongues here. You are choking my legs so well. And then we quickly, in annoyance, we carry all our cutlasses and begin to cut, 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 cut. And we cut it. Say, yes, you this tree, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are an obstruction in this place. And the thing keeps quiet. Keeps quiet. So oh, I did not know that you would not like what I was producing. I'm sorry. I will try to change next time. So when it begins to rain again, as the rain was falling, it falls on all the good, good plants. It falls on all the vegetables. It falls on all the flowers. And the rain also falls on this one too. And as the rain was falling, all other plants were shooting for. This one also started shooting for. And you say, yes, I hope this time around you will behave yourself. Say, I am trying, sir. I am trying, sir. I am trying, sir. After about six months, when every plant has enjoyed rain and fertilizer, and each person is bringing forth, bringing forth, bringing forth, bringing forth, you come to this, your old friend. Say, I hope you like the way I'm also coming forth among all others. And then one time, you just move carelessly near it. You just find that the thumbs again, chook you. He said, what? How long did I tell you that they don't like thumbs in this year? He said, oh, but I have tried to change. I have tried to change, but I cannot. What is inside of me is what I have faithfully produced. So Jesus said, ever before I begin to talk about fruit to you, I am the true vine. Only on me and in me and by me 
can you bear a correct fruit? Every other fruit you try to bear, when you have not become completely and properly engrafted on the Lord Jesus, they will be naturally wise. And we will never blame you for that. Except that at the end of the day, since God is not interested in that kind of fruit, both yourself and the work of your hand and all that you need to do shall be packed together and cast into fire. My first question this morning, because Jesus introduced it, I would have gone on doing my own thing. But the Baba said, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I am the true vine. And let me check with every man in this hall. Have you been engrafted? Has your life been caught from the natural and engrafted on the spiritual? Some say, you know, I thank God since the past one year. I have joined the All Christian Fellowship Mission and I really enjoy the way they worship. And I thank God in fact when the pastor preaches, I enjoy it. When the voice of victory sings, I just be good. And I like the way brethren come forward and dance to give the offering. I just feel at home here. Listen. But something is embarrassing you. What is the embarrassment? When you want to produce fruit, you suddenly discover that the same old fruit is what you are still producing, even here. You are enjoying the rain, you are enjoying the provision, you are enjoying the trimming, the vine dressing of our pastors and preachers, but it has not affected your productivity. If there's any problem at all, the trimming has not allowed you to produce as you normally would have produced. But the little you are producing still shows is the same thing. So say, thank God since I came to this church, at least my anger has reduced. But any time that life had a little opportunity to manifest, it still comes up with that violent anger. Do this time for a short while. What is making it short? The trimming. They are not allowing you to grow your wings. They are not allowing you. Before, the way you run after girls was so wide. But since you have been brought around here, and pastors are always trimming you every week, every time. They just cut those wings anytime you go and say, You are coming, you are coming, you are coming again. You are coming again. We told you that we don't like that kind of thing. Say, well, I will try to behave myself. But you know, I'm, I'm genuinely producing what is inside of me. So you find that the only natural inclination of your heart. It was gain. Even when we are in fellowship or we are here singing or rejoicing or you never see men. The only thing you see every day you come to church is this beautiful lady. And you say, God, if not this streaming, if not the way they are saying we should not uh, just touch people, what is wrong in just being friends with this beautiful sister? After all, I'm also a brother. You see that now. Even though we have not allowed you to produce in large quantities, the little that is showing forth already shows the indication of the wide only. I must ask you. The only thing that will make you produce fruit that meets divine expectation is a graphic. A proper grafting that takes your life from the natural and engrafts it on the true vine, the Lord Jesus. This thing I'm talking about 
He looks so simple, but it's a very, very fundamental issue in bearing fruit that remains. And you might wonder, I say, but why is this brother delivering this issue? Doesn't he know that we are all Christians? And if we are not Christians, will I even ever come to this kind of church? I congratulate you. And I praise God for you. But you know Jesus said, by their fruits, you shall know them. The thing that is shooting forth in your life. The thing that your wife suddenly stumbles at in your character is pointing to us that you are of the old, wide, holy plan. That is the trouble. You have been well trimmed. We praise God for that. But even the little that remains, even the little star that is trying to shoot off, the thing that is coming is already telling us that, excuse me, the light inside is of the white only plant. If you allow me to bear more fruit, I will bear for my father. What shall we do about that? Shall we just say, well, brother, let's continue. No, we will not continue. If we continue like this, you will be surprised. When heaven will come down to inspect people. Because on that day, when we will be called one by one to take our places in eternity, one of the things they will be checking they will be checking what kind of fruit is this. And at that time, ah, they say, but how did you manage to sit all through church studies, all through seminars, all through Bible studies? He said, well, I was never uprooted. I was never engrafted. I was only trimmed. I remember when I went there, I had no opportunity to do many things I used to do. But I know, clue, 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 in my heart, most possible like this, the thing just come. But I said, ah, no, you don't do that here. That was how I was able to maintain myself in their midst. I thought that if I was able to suppress myself like that, I would still be finally receiving. Uh, sorry. Sorry. We are looking for the true vine. Even if the old vine were distorted, we don't need it. I will bring this question to your heart as we pray together. And never you stand up and say, well, I thank God. No. The first thing to check indications of the old vine. Indications of the old nature. Indications. Indications. That's what to check. Don't say, but I have not produced too much. No! You did not produce much because the environment did not allow it. Is that not so? Ah! How many young men are they will fornicate? But there's no chance. Some say, I will have done it, but I have no chance. I do not pray that God will give you chance. To misbehave. I don't pray for that chance. But whether there is chance or no chance, the indication in your life, in your heart, shows that you are not of the true vine. So the Lord Jesus said, I am the true vine. What is the implication of that statement? It meant that for you to bear fruit that meets divine expectation. 
you must be transplanted. You must be engrafted on the true vine. This is not a mere activity. This is not a mere program. This is not a mere sweet talk. You must be engrafted. Jesus said, I must not deceive you except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. So my brothers, because of that introduction, that's why I had gone here. That's why we had gone all around you. I am true vine. When Jesus said he is the true vine, what does that mean? That is, I am the only source by which a correct life, a correct fruitfulness, a correct output can come out. You cannot get it anywhere else. You cannot mimic it. You cannot struggle to get it. I am the true vine. And for you to bear such a fruit, you must be connected to me by grafting. But you know the process of grafting is so interesting. The first thing is that you cut off from the native plant. Is that all right? Then you carry it very quickly. And come and graft it on a correct vine that's already having its own roots and you bind it. Agriculture, are you here? Is that what you do? You bind it very tightly until it becomes glued so that when the nutrient is coming from the stem, from the trunk, it will be passing, it will be passing, it will be passing, it will be passing. Hallelujah. And it is the nutrient that goes into a branch that produces the kind of fruit. That is the secret of it. And I want to say, brother, you need to be caught. Caught out of your old life. Caught out of your nature. And look, you can't be too old for it. Hallelujah. The question Nicodemus has to say, how can that be when I am already old? I am in my 50s. You mean I have to start like that? He said, yes. You can't be too old for this experience. Some people come in because they feel they are old. They don't want to go through this correct process of grafting. They just say, well, let me join them. Let me try to adjust. Let me try to make uh, things all right. It will never be all right. The reason why we have so many fruitless, barren Christians in the church is that they, they, they omitted the correct process of grafting. And they are more difficult to handle. More difficult. It's in that church growth. It's in that the glory of God. In this person that you thought had been with us for five years, suddenly you just discover that he has gone to fight with his wife. You see, brother, most Christians don't do that. So what? I'm a Christian, but I can I don't take nonsense. Is it because I'm a Christian that this girl is going to take me to be stupid? I am not stupid. And I want her to know today that I'm not stupid. And then everybody is surprised. They brought that cool down and say, no, 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 no. Ah, but you are a Christian. Is it, I tell you I'm a Christian. Have I missed church? But I'm telling you that I don't want to pretend. I want to tell you the beat of my mind. That's the truth. You have been with us five years on gravity. Only three. You see, I can't go beyond here. I will stop here. The reason is because we are coming back in the night. 
Are you grafted? Or only tree? Are you grafted? Or only tree? Are you uprooted? From the old nature, the old, you know, wide vine, are you uprooted and grafted into the new life, or you are just trimmed? The reason why you, you get embarrassed with your life many times is because of this omission. Sometimes it's painful. Some people say, this brother has come again. Eh? When he comes, he makes me feel as if I was never converted. No, if you were converted, you can never be unconverted. Are you understanding me now? If you were grafted, you can never be ungrafted. But if we are dealing with issues and your heart is being good, we say, ah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure it's better to be sure than to assume. Presumption is a terrible thing that God will judge in heaven. Presumption. Why did Mary and Joseph, why did they lose Jesus when they went to Jerusalem? The Bible said they presumed that he was in their company. And they went three days journey only to discover that Jesus was not with them. They had to go back looking for him because they presumed he was there. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, my sister. And young man, young woman. Hey, sister. What will embarrass you so greatly? And what will embarrass all of us as a church is when Jesus comes. And the person that we are calling sister, we may even call you deaconess. We say, where is deaconess? This is a deaconess who? We don't know her. So we come boldly and say, you mean you don't know me? In your name I did many things. He said, ah, we never knew you. You are of the native wide family. The ones we are looking for here are the true vine. I will plead with you. I will plead with you with all my heart. And let me tell you this. You know he does not, I do not get anything in terms of personal benefit if you make a decision for Jesus. You know me with all your heart that I do not come here to take money. I hope you know that. Don't say this man with sweet mouth, sweet mouth. No. I beg you by the mercy of God. I beg you because of eternity that is coming. I beg you because of Jesus who will call you to order one of these days. I beg you because on that day everything will be naked. I plead with you because on that day nothing can be hidden before him. And on that day, none of us will be around to defend him. On that day, nobody, including our G.O., will be able to say, excuse me, sir, Lord Jesus, you know he is my member. Even if there's something wrong with him, use my own merit. And the way I have been a faithful servant of God for many years, Use that one to cover him. It won't be possible that day. I plead with you because you have been with us for some time. You've identified with Jesus. You've borne his name and you have been watered. You have been fertilized. You have been given promises. We have prayed for you. You may have received healing. I plead with you. Jesus said, I'm the true vine. The word true vine is what is worrying me today. Not just the vine, but the true vine. I'd like to check with you. 
I can plead with you in prayer. And you know this kind of meeting. Even if you say, well, I don't like what the man said. No problem. No problem. No problem. One of these days you will like it. It will be too late that time. Then you say, but that man was emphasizing, emphasizing, and I took it for granted. As I call you to prayer, when I come in the night, I'll go up. But I think it's enough for us to pray. How do I know? Check the indication. The indication. The indication. The indication. The little, little things that is pricking your conscience, pricking your heart. Between last year and this year, you thought it's finished, but it has come again. And you are saying, but I thought I finished this matter. Maybe the issue is that of grafting and not truly. Are you engrafted or you are only tree? Engrafted or just tree? I do not grow white again because I'm free. Bow your head as we pray together. Holy Spirit, this far we can go as men. Beyond here we have no access unto people. Lord, as men, this is the limit. We can preach, but we cannot go beyond here. This afternoon, the gate into the heart of men, only you have the key. The heart of man is so locked up that no man can know it. But you can do something. And this morning, we are calling on you as this congregation of men and women are bowing their lives before you who understood and understand and we ever understand. Do something. The spirit of truth brings conviction. Let no man sit on presumption. Let no man live when gravity has not taken place. Holy Spirit, do this work now and we will return all the glory to you. As we pray individually, as we confess individually, as we take you to the real root of our life, Spirit of God, do something definite. Do not only convict men, but convince them. Show them the righteousness that is in Christ Jesus. Show them Jesus is stretching forth his arm to save, to forgive, to pardon, and to reestablish. Lord, I know you will do it now. Thank you, Father. Now it is your own turn to pray. I want you to open your mouth quietly and just tell the Lord just as you are. Look at the indications. Fruit that will meet divine expectations can only come through Jesus. If all you did over the time was trimming, it doesn't matter, God can begin with you again. All eyes are closed, all heads are bowed, every man is talking to God for himself. Cross check, brother, cross check, sister. And within this short while, Within the short while that we have, I do not want you to let this year be.
begin again and run away from your hand while you are still struggling with those things that normally should fall from your inner man and they are not the correct fruit. Pray about it now. We will take a little song as we sing. And if this morning you are saying, Lord, I understand why every effort for my life to be correct was never correct. The true vine, I must come on him. I must be engrafted on him. I must be engrafted on him. I must be engrafted on him. I want Jesus. I want to start a ride. I will never be ashamed to identify with Jesus and let him do my life well from now. You will quietly, as I take that song, just three times, only, only three times. You will just lift up your right hand where you are. If you are saying, Lord, today, let me not live here struggling with the old white holy. Let me not live here just myself. Let this year not go away from my hand as 1997 left me. 1996 left me a struggler. I must not continue like this. I know you will help me. I know you will help me. We'll take that song. All the hands that are lifted. Lift it to God, not to a man. Nobody is interested in looking at you. Only the Lord. God bless you. I'll take this song.
shows that I'm of the white man. But this afternoon, my only thing is that Jesus Christ died for me. The true vine has been caught that I may be brought in. The true vine has been made available for me to come. So take me. Just take me. Change my nature, change my life. From this morning, change my life, change my situation. From today, I'm old, but let me start afresh with you. Let me know in my lifetime the blessedness of walking with the Lord. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you for hearing this prayer. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Be with your hand on your heart. I will ask Reverend to please pray and lead this life to the bosom of the Savior. I know God is going to do something. Your fruit will be a different kind from today. Pray this prayer of repentance after me and be sincere. God knows your heart. He has promised that those who thirst and hunger after righteousness will be filled. My Father and my God, please say it out loud. My Father and my God, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. An opportunity of a lifetime to hear your undiluted word meant to bring me to repentance. Help me to make the most of this opportunity. Not to allow it to pass me by. For I know that I'll be held accountable one of these days by God for the word I've had today. Dear Lord, I have come out to this place define all shame in sincerity and in truth. I humble myself before you and ask you, dear Lord, to have mercy upon me. My Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. On the cross, where you shed your blood for the remission of my sins, have mercy on me. Forgive all my sins, my, all my atrocities, in open and in secret, against you, I confess today. Forgive me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now. Change my life. Give me grace to serve you the rest of my life. Satan, I renounce you and all your evil works. From today, I made up my mind to follow Jesus the rest of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for forgiving my sins, for cleansing my heart, for cleansing my life, and for making me your child. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let me pray for you. Gracious Father, I thank you for this precious source. You said, as many as come to you, you will no wise cast out. Gracious Father, receive them unto yourself. And let the miracle of the new birth take place right now in their spirit. Transform their lives by your mighty power. Lord, uproot the old olive plant and engraft them today into the true vine. Make them truly yours today. Give them the grace and the power from today to live for you and to serve you faithfully the rest of their lives. I take authority and dominion over the power and activities of the devil in your spirit, in your souls, in your mind, in your mortal body. I have continued to hinder you from serving God the way you want to serve him. I command all such activities of the devil in your life paralyzed in the name of Jesus. I approve them in the name of Jesus and command all of them to be flushed out of every fiber of your being by the blood of Jesus Christ. Receive strength in your inner man by the power and the enabling power of the Holy Spirit to live the life you are expected to live in Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Congratulations. I would like you to please follow these uh, elders and deacons. Very briefly, they are going to talk with you and give you some gifts that will help you further in uh, serving the Lord Jesus.
درختان It would be most unfortunate for us to hear a word like this and uh, not make the most of the opportunity that the word has presented to allow God to move into our lives and shape our lives and our destinies. I like us to individually respond to God to the message concerning the message we have had this morning. The message has reached us and it means different things to different people because we are not at the same level. Let us now talk to God individually concerning the word we have had. In whichever way the word of God has spoken to you, has ministered to you, the Bible says we should not be forgetful hearers but doers of the word of God that it might be well with us. Those of us who have been in the church for several years, as the man of God has spoken, and yet, you may have received Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you have refused to go any further to grow. You refuse to yield yourself completely to Him. And so you continue to embarrass yourself and embarrass God. Will you make up your mind today to totally surrender yourself and totally yield yourself to the Holy Spirit so that you stop being a babe in Christ but grow to maturity to bring God honor and praise to His holy name? There are many of us who have been expecting God, asking God to do one thing or the other for us. It's not that God cannot hear us or God does not hear us or can do whatever it is that we are asking Him. But many times our sins and our iniquities stand as a stumbling block that God cannot pass through to reach us. Clean up your life, clean up your way today and God will step into your situation. Lift up your hands as we pray. Our sovereign Lord, we thank you for speaking to us today through your servant as you have spoken to us. When you speak like this, it is because you have something in mind. And it is because you love us dearly. You say you know the thoughts you are thinking towards us, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give us a future and a hope. But I'm praying you that nobody within the sound of the voice of your servant today will go away from this place without being transformed. Meet us at the point of our need. Transform our lives for good and glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You better be seated and God bless you. Thank you. Before we leave, we thank you for your patience.